Hey y'all, Chelsea and Danny here. Enjoy this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. If you've been thinking about fencing around your home, stay with us. Welcome to Today's Homeowner with Danny Lipford. Get ready for a half hour full of projects, tips and ideas to help you improve your home. Welcome to the show this week. You know, some people want fencing around their homes to improve the security. Others want to improve the privacy. That's the situation we have with these homeowners. They live right on this busy street. They need a little more privacy, so a wooden privacy fence is the right way to go. This week, we'll show you what's involved in building that fence, including a few gates, and we'll look at all the other many, many options available for fencing in your yard today. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the show. Now these homeowners have decided to have a fence company install all of the fencing in their yard. But if you decide to take it on yourself, we're about to show you all the steps necessary for a successful fencing project. Now the first thing you need to do is to check on any local restrictions that may govern exactly where you can put your fence. In this case, we had some neighborhood covenants that we had to adhere to that required a setback from the road to this location. So that's what determined exactly where this fence would go. But you need to check with also your local building codes on the style of fence that they may allow you to install. Now after you've taken care of that, you need to find out where those property lines are. Very important to make sure you're putting the fence on your property. Now after that, it's time to get to work and do a little bit of layout and a lot of digging. The corner post was dug and set the appropriate distance from the street and the house. Next, the guys measure across the back fence to square the yard and pull a string from the front corner post to the point on the back fence. A tape laid along the line allows the crew to evenly space the post, in this case, about every seven feet. The actual digging of the hole is done by a motorized auger, which really speeds up the process. Old-fashioned post hole diggers then clean out the finished hole before the posts go in. Now these eight foot posts are measured and marked from top to bottom with marks for the stringers and a grade line. This way they won't have to cut off the post later. The posts are set from the starting corner to the gate locations. While Eddie holds the post level, Mike shovels in the concrete, which is intentionally a very wet mix to be sure it settles around the post without any voids. Eddie double checks the level and they move on. Boy, the posts are nice and straight, and the crew is going to allow the concrete around the post to set up for a couple days before they come back and install their runners and the fence boards. Now, the fence boards that the homeowners have selected will be the same type that the neighbors have used around the other two sides of his backyard, so everything will look the same, other than this fence will look a little newer than the fences that are two or three years old. You know, there's a lot of options in wood fencing. To talk about all the different options available in wood fencing, Jim Mize, whose company is taking care of our fencing project and knows a lot about fencing. Now, Jim, I know the homeowners there are matching fencing that's adjacent to their house, which is the dog-eared style. Mm -hmm. I guess that's probably one of your most popular. Yes, the most uh, popular and probably the most economical for privacy. I see. Uh, yeah. Okay, good. Now, um, and I know that when you talk about a fencing that maybe um, homeowners are sharing the cost, you get a lot of these, which uh, I've always heard called the good neighbor yeah, fence. Yeah, we call it the vertical shadow box. It looks good on both sides. It gives you plenty of privacy. Uh, it's an excellent product. Yeah, it's great. That's, yeah. that's perfect. It really mm -hmm. does look nice. And, and I know lattice work is still being used. It's been used for years, and people are um, starting to use that more and more for fencing, but uh, they're having to pay a little more for that, aren't they? That's true. you got to box it in and, you know, trim it out and all. It makes it a little bit more expensive. Now, I've seen yeah. this also used uh, many times where you'd have uh, maybe a standard uh, wood fence and then have this almost as an accent That's on top. That's true. It, it really adds a lot to it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now you're getting a little fancier yeah. here with a with an arch here, a little more design to that. Yeah, you got the arch and you got the finials on top that adds to it. Everybody's got their own ideas. This looks great. We right. do a lot of it. Well, that's good that you can be a little versatile. You know, um, right. that's one, one of right. the great things about wood. That's now, uh, this is a little higher than the um, the six-foot fence that we've looked at. I guess you could go up almost as high as uh, the guidelines will allow. That's true. This is a seven to eight-foot high, I think, and back here in the back mm -hmm. is eight-foot high. That's usually as high as we can go in this area. 
without getting an oil, a change, you know, at a variance or right. something like okay. that. Okay. Okay. Now, um, this most of these fences, of course, um, not only give you the privacy, gives you the security, but a lot of people like a little ornate look with a um, picket fence, and I'm sure that you're dealing with a lot of that. Uh, absolutely. We have the Virginia picket, the French Gothic, the regular pointed picket, and you, you add little tops to the post, and everything makes it different. There's few things that'll warm up a front yard more than a nice white picket That's fence. That's exactly right. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Jim, thanks for taking a few You're minutes. You're welcome. And now, our simple solution. It's time to pick up a few tricks of the trade from Danny and home repair expert Joe Truini in this week's Simple Solution, brought to you by DuPont Tyvek. Build it once, build it right. Well, Joe, it looks like it's snack time. Well, it's not exactly snack time, but what I'm hoping to do here, Danny, is organize this cabinet so it'll be a little easier to find not only the snacks, but these canned goods. This is how most people use their cabinets. They just slide in the cans and the boxes of food. Yeah, you can never find or know what you have yeah. there in the bank. The problem is if you're looking for something, like here's the peanut butter, you know, you have to take out five or six cans or jars just to get to it. Well, what I'll show you is a way to organize this cabinet so it's a lot easier to find items and to store more neatly, and all you need are a few two by fours. Okay. So we start by just emptying out the cabinet and then just cut three two by fours so they're a little shorter than the inside dimension of the cabinet just so you can slide them into place. You put two in the back and set these two on edge like this. You, you need two of them just to make a wide enough base to hold the, the can. I see. Then you take a third one and just set it flat so you create this sort of three step tiered system. And then in the back, you can put the taller items so you can always find them. They're easily seen. And then the cans, medium-sized cans, can go in the middle. And then the shorter items can go up front. And what it allows you to do is, even if they overlap one another a little bit, you can still see what's all the way in the back. And I guess if you wanted to, you could actually stain or paint the pieces of wood to kind of make it blend in. You could, but, you know, you can, as you can see, once it's loaded up, you don't even really see the, the two-by-fours. Well, this tip's kind of making me hungry. Here, let me try this. Welcome back to the show. Now our fence crew is really moving along on our fencing project and they've been able to complete all of the installation of our stringers. Now this was after our posts were in place, concrete nice and dry, they came back in with the material we're using for the stringers. Now this material is a full one inch thick and it's all pressure treated just like our post. Now it's important that the one inch thickness be used because some of our, our posts are as much as seven or eight feet apart and a piece of three quarter inch wood of any kind like a one by four just wouldn't be strong enough. Now the installation of all of the stringers went really quick. Eddie and the crew begin nailing up the stringers at the marks they made earlier on each post. The pneumatic nailer secures the boards as quickly as they can be positioned. At the post they seam the stringers by cutting them so that each piece overlays half of the post. When they reach the gate opening the excess stringer is trimmed flush with the chainsaw. They also fill in the gaps between the stringers on the gate post. This will support the gate hardware a little bit later. When all of the stringers are in, they begin setting the 1x6 fence boards by tacking up a board at each end of a run. Both are leveled and measured equally from the top stringer. Next, a string is pulled between these two boards that will act as a guide for nailing the rest of the fence boards. Again, the nail gun makes this a quick job. If an odd width board is needed at the end of a run, it's marked from the back side and ripped to fit the space exactly. At this pace, these guys can finish a large section of fence very quickly. An important consideration on any fencing is not to block off access to any part of your yard. Here the homeowners have a fairly nice backyard and maybe later a swimming pool or some playground equipment may appear so they need some way of getting it in. They've decided on two five foot gates. When open that'll give them a 10 foot span which is sufficient to bring in a truck or concrete truck or heavy equipment later on. Now it's important when you're building a gate to build it right and this is where a little skill is involved to build a gate that won't sag and cause you problems later on. And it is one of the more problematic areas of any type of fencing. Now, this particular fence company actually uses metal framing on their gates. Any gate requires good support, so Eddie used 4x6 posts instead of 4x4s on either side of this opening since each will hold up a 5-foot section of gate. The first post was set and leveled before the second post was measured from it. It's important that the top and bottom of the post be equal distances apart so that the space between the gates is consistent. Next, Eddie makes a template to recreate the angle necessary for the gate to follow the contour of this lot. The posts are level, but the yard isn't, so the corner of the gates can't be exactly 90 degrees. 
Now back at the shop, David uses this template to weld the gate frame from one and five eighths inch galvanized steel tubing. The welds are cleaned up and sprayed with a no rust coating. The fence boards are then laid out on it and attached with self-tapping sheet metal screws. When the gates arrive out on the job, the hardware is attached before they're put into position. The gates go in after the surrounding boards are in so that the tops can line up exactly with the rest of the fence before they're secured to the 4x6 post with long lag bolts. When the doors line up, the final latch hardware goes in. The gate is tested and they're done. Well, the gates work great and they should stay that way with the metal framing that was used on the gates. Now, it's very important that the gates contoured to the slope of the ground just as important for the boards to kind of follow along the slope of any lot. Now here's a little different in that we're keeping the top of the fence level, but here is where the water drains from the backyard out to the street. So we needed to allow room for that. So Eddie kept those boards up just a little bit. But then the slope of the ground rises back up and somewhere right in here, he started the boards back up so that they would line up with the adjoining fence. So all of this looks great and really will provide some security and privacy for these homeowners. Now when we come back after our best new product segment, we'll look at other fencing other than wood. Stay with us. Now let's join Danny at the Home Center to check out this week's best new product, brought to you by the Home Depot. Over the years, I've seen a number of different window coverings that homeowners have used to provide a little more privacy in their home. I see a lot of blinds around, shades, curtains, but I've never seen anything quite like this. Now this is a translucent window film that's applied to the interior of a glass window like this, and it's called Artscape Window Coverings. Now there's a lot of different designs available from a cloud look to flowers, almost any kind of design you can imagine for the decor of your home, even some that look a lot like stained glass windows. Now it's very easy to install, no adhesive is required. The manufacturer recommends using a spray bottle with water and a few drops of hand soap. You spray down the glass that you want to apply the film to, then put the film over the glass and squeeze out any of the air bubbles and you're done. That's all that's necessary unless you need to trim around it a little bit. Now later on, if you want to change the design or go back to the clear glass, you can just peel the film right off and you're back where you started from. Now this would be perfect for some of the areas in your home where you really want privacy, such as your bathroom or your bedroom. Or if you have the view of your neighbor's garage out of your window, you may rather look at something like this than the garage. Now a roll of this, of this size, only costs around $17. And as I said, there's plenty to choose from. Welcome back to the show. Now so far this week we've looked at a number of different types of wood fencing and shown you how we've been able to solve the problems the homeowners have had with a lack of privacy in their backyard. They don't have to worry about that anymore. Now the homeowners have decided in that particular project to leave all of the wood fencing natural. Now that will require very little maintenance over the years to, to keep it that way. Maybe a little cleaning and possibly sealing the fence if it starts looking a little weathered. Now if you decide in your yard that you want to paint fence, then you might try the option of vinyl fencing. Vinyl fencing comes in several different colors, both white, gray, and tan, and in several different styles as well. Now this is kind of a stockade or privacy type panel, and it's available in more traditional styles like picket fences and a variety of heights that are available there as well. Now the installation of a vinyl fence is a little bit different then instead of putting all of your posts in the ground and coming back and installing all the other panels, you basically put one post in the ground, then install your panel, slips right in to pre-cut holes around the post, and then you continue right on down the line. Many of the gates, different styles are available with using the aluminum hardware, so you're not having to worry about any of the corrosion or rot, and termites don't even like any of the vinyl fencing, so you don't have to worry about that as well. Also, a number of other options with different post caps that allow you to kind of customize your fence. And this particular panel has a reversed arch in it. This one has the more traditional straight line uh, for the picket fence. So, uh, you know, it's a pretty good option, but you're going to pay a little bit more for the vinyl fencing, a, a good bit more than wood fencing. But if you're going to have to paint it several times over the years, it might balance out. 
Now this is one option for more of a maintenance free approach to any fencing in your yard, but another option is aluminum fencing. When most homeowners choose vinyl fencing, they usually do so to mimic the look of a painted wood fence. Now aluminum fencing like this can really simulate the look of wrought iron. Now the problem with wrought iron though is it's so heavy, it's so labor intensive because of all of the fabrication that has to be done and there's a lot of maintenance involved in it to try to keep the rust from really destroying the iron and the look of the fencing. So a lot of sanding, scraping and painting has to be done to really maintain a wrought iron fence. Now aluminum, the paint is actually baked on at the factory so you have a nice finish that's available in a number of different colors, the more traditional being the black and a lot of different designs designs that are available, a lot more lightweight, a lot easier to install. Now the installation is basically installing all of the posts and allowing the concrete to set up. Then you have your panels that you cut to fit between the posts, then the brackets hold them right in place. It's very maintenance free and in a situation like this, the homeowners wanted a little more of a formal look here at the end of their driveway and they wanted to be able to um, keep their dog inside the yard, so that works well for that. But on the rest of the yard, they wanted a little more privacy, so they stayed with the six foot wood privacy fence around the perimeter of their backyard. Now like I say it's fairly maintenance free but you can't talk about maintenance free fencing without talking about masonry. Brick or stucco fences are very popular around entrances to subdivisions because they help not only to create an elegant look but also to block out much of the traffic noise on busy streets. It's also very common to see bricks being used in conjunction with wood or iron fencing. Of course, any masonry fence requires adequate concrete footings, which helps to make masonry fencing one of the more expensive options. On the other end of the spectrum, and one of the least expensive ways to fence in your yard is to use chain link fencing. Now, chain link fencing is really not that ornamental, but it's very functional and enables you to provide a little more security around your yard or to contain a pet in your backyard. Now, if you select the right fence for your yard, it can really improve the look of your house. Now to improve the look of your lawn, check out this week's Around the Yard. Let's head outside for Around the Yard with Danny and lawn and garden expert Trisha Craven Worley. Trisha, this trellis really does look a lot better now that the vines have started overtaking it. Oh, a trellis is such a great idea for a wall such as this that needs a little something or even a fence. Now this one was very easy to build. We started out by going to the home center and getting a few of the one by twos that we've used, all of it being pressure treated. Then we took five of the eight foot pieces, laid them out on the driveway and secured one end of them all together using screws. Then we fanned out the five pieces and held them out by using some of the horizontal pieces we put together using galvanized nails so there wouldn't be any rust kind of flowing down here later on during the rains. Now also we positioned the base of the trellis down in the ground, leaned it back and then the vines took over. Now I guess the selection of vines are very important in the success of a trellis like this. That's right Danny. On a trellis such as this you might want to use a lightweight vine like a jasmine or a honeysuckle or bougainvillea. There are lots of choices of a lightweight vine. Something you don't want to use on something like this is a wisteria because it would really take over the whole thing. And what about uh, the spacing? I know we have about 16 inches here. Uh, would it be suggested maybe to go a little closer with those? You know that's a personal choice and a, a beautiful trellis like this it would be nice to follow the lines that you've created by the structure but if you wanted to have an overall effect where it's all covered I think spacing it a little bit more closely would be a great idea. Whether you choose aluminum fencing, wood fencing or one of the many other options that we talked about or maybe even a combination of several of these options I hope we've been able to share with you some information that will help you make those decisions. Keep in mind many of the home centers are carrying a lot of the pre-assembled panels of the type of fencing that we talked about which makes it a lot easier to do it yourself. Until next week, I'm Danny Lippert. One popular flooring option these days is hardwood floors. Join us next week for a great flooring project.
Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to like, comment, and hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified of new videos. And be sure to click around and watch some more videos while you're here.